that inertia or that momentum occurs because the dog already knows the destination. Okay? Hey, we're going for a walk. And he's already, yeah, buddy. Right? So what you want to do is not announce what you're going to do and start helping him create that internal order by slowing him down and just backing him up. Two steps forward, one step back. One step forward, three steps back, until he starts realizing that what he wants is not going to occur until you get what you want, which is order, calm and orderly behavior. And all of a sudden, the dog starts realizing, if I pay closer attention to that person at the end of the leash, what I want occurs faster. Because what he's thinking is, my reward is going on the other side of that door. My reward is going wherever that next step is. Dogs are so in the moment. It's not about the treat or the toy that you have to offer them. It's about that self-gratification that every teenage boy and girl on the face of the planet experiences the very first time they're free of their parents' influence. Exact same behavior, right? So now all of a sudden we have to teach them a little bit of circumspection. Okay? Oh, and if I'm quiet, things move faster. That's all we want. And that's all this does. It teaches him, we follow you. Right? We don't do whatever we want. And the reason we're silent is self-evident. The more we talk to him, the less he listens. The less we talk to him, the more he's like, holy hell, I'm responsible for my own behavior now. You see what I'm saying? And I actually think that talking is too much to him. Way too much for a dog like him. When I when we were inside and I said, good dog, and I patted him on the head, what happened? Woo! Right? He just went crazy within the split second that that, that occurred. And now all of a sudden he's like, oh, okay. So we create value in the things that we offer, but we want to kind of subdue that so that he doesn't have that. And this dog's the same way. He's the exact same way. You give him a treat, he loses his mind. You pet him on the head, he loses his mind. Okay? All right, you ready? Now. Now, I'm going to step around. I'm not paying no attention to the leash you just straightened down. I mean, I am paying attention. You're paying attention to it. In case I have to step on it. It, it will straighten itself. It will straighten itself out. Good. Now he's going to drive you step on the leash. Good. There you go. Now, you, ah, ah, ah. Hold up. Yeah. Because things have changed. Now he's facing you. He's not facing you. So both of you are going to turn that. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Drop the leash. Get back. Get back. Fatty fatty pants. Good oh, your ears are off. And you're dirty. You're fat and dirty. Nice. Now, don't request to sit. If he happens to sit, that's fine. But do you notice the difference just since we started? Now all of a sudden, where's his mind? On you. Good job. Nice catch. Move on. And right there. Good lad. Step on the leash. Every time you get to your destination, I Step want you to get in the habit of doing that. That will change at the end of the first week. But for right now, I want you to get in the habit of, as soon as you stop, just kind of sidle your little foot right on over there and make sure that he can't escape that influence. Okay? Good lad. Sit, Heifer. Good. She's right behind you. Bacon underwear. Good. All right. You're up. Good. Good, good. Good. Okay? If you end up like that, 
fifth. Back step on that lead. Take the additional second or two to reorient before you continue. But basically, depending on the direction that everything is flowing, determines how you fix yourself to the seat going straight. Right? Because the objective is the next destination. Right? You're at 70 feet. At 55 feet, 60 feet. Okay? You need to feel yourself doing that. You need to correct yourself. You need to be too close to the seat. You need to be close to the next destination. this exercise. 